And we start here. Many businesses in countries that are eligible for the African Growth and Opportunity Act are unaware of the benefits that are offered by this preferential trade deal. Well, that's according to Ghana's uh, Deputy uh, Minister of Trade and Industry, Nana Amadoa Asimaya Ajesi. She says uh, lack of access uh, to information regarding the GOA protocol has resulted in lower utilization of the arrangement for duty-free access to the U.S. market. Now, this is one of the issues that will shape the future of uh, the deal following the three-day summit that was held in Johannesburg this week. Many businesses in the over 30 countries in the sub-Saharan region which are eligible to participate in the African Growth and Opportunities Act cannot take advantage of this opportunity. This as they struggle to meet the conditions to export to the U.S. There are strict rules on the quality of packaging among others. Access to information is one of the issues that hamper these businesses. Ghana says more work needs to be done to improve the uptake of AGOA. We want to have access to to um, the finished products on on the AGOA product, uh, protocols, as well as expanding what we were originally um, doing. The utilization of AGOA has not exactly got to do with um, only access to the market, but possibly access to information with regards to the AGOA protocols, access to even the opportunities on leveraging what AGOA brings on board. And I think for us in Ghana, we'll, we'll have to organize a lot more trainings, a lot more workshops, a lot more sessions to be able to inform um, manufacturers and entrepreneurs on the opportunities available. AGOA will expire in 2025 and African leaders want a timely renewal. But U.S. lawmakers will have the final say. Economies in sub-Saharan Africa continue to battle to trade across the 6,000 product lines offered by AGOA. Namibia is one of the countries that is seeking ways to gain more value from the AGOA arrangement through cooperation with South Africa. The grapes, the dates, uh, the leather and leather products, uh, the art and artifacts materials, and then we look at the uh, oils and, and cosmetic products. Those are other categories of, of goods that we believe we, we have an opportunity to, uh, as, as well as the inputs to certain production of medicine. But then we are saying, if we have identified South Africa as, as, as a champion in the pharmaceutical products, uh, we, we first have to give our inputs in terms of, uh, let me say, the devil clause that we, we, are, we, we are extracting to South Africa to maybe just doing a, 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 a first level of value addition to make sure we dry them out, we pack them in a manner that they are required to come here for further processing so that at the end of the day we have finished the goods to, to infuse in the market. Meanwhile, the United States says America and Africa need to work together to ensure growth in trade that will benefit everyone. One of our jobs here together with the South Africans and all of our delegations is to be very specific about the real opportunities on the continent, be very clear about where we see challenges with security, but encourage the American private sector to know that Africa is open for business and there are real opportunities and the U.S. government through our legislation like the African Growth and Opportunity Act is a way to have really powerful two-way trade that benefits Americans and Africans. Africa wants to capacitate itself to grow the continent's economy through the exporting of finished goods. Notando Makutulela, SAPC News, Johannesburg.